Hi, this video is about my witch books and I'm going to tell you a little bit about each one of them and I'm going to tell you which order you can read them in and I hope that helps when you're choosing where to start in the series, which isn't really a series and that will become apparent as we go on. Okay, so the first one is The Witch's Daughter and this was the one I wrote when I was looking for a really strong female character and that's what led me to writing about witches in the first place. I thought what if in those 17th century um, witch trials in England, what if some of the witches they, they tried and prosecuted actually did have magic in their blood? What if they were capable of doing incredible and powerful and wonderful things? And that what if gave me my character Elizabeth Ann Hawksmith. So that was the first book that I wrote. I also I wanted to write historical fiction and I couldn't choose which era to write in. I didn't know whether I wanted to write 17th century or Victorian. I thought, well, I could do both if I had a character who was almost immortal. So the little bit on the back, which I'm going to read for you now because I think it makes sense, says, my name is Elizabeth Ann Hawksmith and my age is 384 years. If you will listen, I will tell you a tale of witches. And because Elizabeth is almost immortal. She has lived this incredibly long life and the book starts with her filling in her book of shadows when she's moved into a new home in Dorset and it tells us a little bit about her background in the book but in the in the book of shadows but then we get more as she recounts her life to the teenage girl Tegan who she befriends and trains to be a hedge witch um, and if you want to know more about that one you can have a look on my website, there's more details on that. There are reading guides and background information there as well. So I'll put the link to that um, in the comments below. So, okay, The Witch's Daughter was the first one. And although it didn't happen for several years, I eventually wrote a sequel to The Witch's Daughter and that is The Return of the Witch. The clue is in the title, The Return of the Witch. Okay, now I don't wanna give any spoilers for the first book, but I'll just read the little bit that's on the back here. In a breathless journey that takes them through history to the 17th and 19th centuries, which pursues Warlock. Three people steeped in magic weave a new story, but not all will survive until the end. Okay, so the story continues. I think that's about all I can tell you about that one, but that is the sequel. So don't read this one first, read this one first, and then that is the sequel. Okay, so those are those two. The next one I'm gonna show you is uh, the Winter Witch. You might be confused about the fact there are a lot of different covers for this one. The English edition had um, two different colours, one covers, one from the hardback and one for the paperback. Okay. So this one was very much inspired by my childhood growing up in the mountains in Wales. Um, it's set in Wales, um, starts off here a little bit in as east of mid Wales and then moves a little bit further west and it's based on the idea of the drovers. Now the drovers were um, farmers in Wales who would move livestock hundreds of miles to sell. So very often they would move them from, in this case, from West Wales to um, London to sell. It was a long journey. And to be a Porthman or a, or a head drover, you had to be married. Um, you needed a reliable person. They were taking a lot of other people's livestock. They'd often take documents for signing, things to sell, other things to sell. So the idea was if they had a wife and a family, they would come back and not just disappear with the proceeds of the drove. So um, one of the two main characters in this book, Kai, needs a wife. His young wife has died. He needs a wife to hold his position as a porcelain. And this is when Morgana, who is our little um, Welsh young girl who is mute. And if you read the book, you'll understand a bit more about that. And her mother is unwell and she's keen to find a safe future for Morgana and she meets Kai and a marriage is arranged and the story starts with their wedding um, and she goes off to live on his farm and start a new life and she doesn't really know what she's capable of as a witch um, at that point and it's only when she goes to her new home and discovers this wonderful well there and the history attached to it and the magic attached to it that her story starts okay um, so that's the winter witch and the other one I'm going to talk to you about next. Where is it? Where is it? Here we go. Here we are. Is 
The Midnight Witch. Now, by the time I'd written the first one, which is set largely in, in uh, rural places, and The Winter Witch, which is set entirely in rural places, I'd had rather enough of mud. There's a lot of mud where I live, and I thought, wouldn't it be nice to do something glamorous, have a setting that is urban and urbane and sophisticated and glamorous, set in 1913 in London. She is a very wealthy witch. Um, she's part of the aristocracy. Uh, this is uh, Lilith Montgomery is, is the daughter um, of, of a lord and she is also the daughter of a head witch of a coven and she is going to inherit that title and the book starts at the point where she has to become head witch of this coven. So there's a lot more magic in this. This is a bit more high fantasy and as I say it's set in the sort of Downton Abbey era in, in London. So that is the Midnight Witch. And the other one I'm going to talk to you about is The Silver Witch. The Silver Witch is another one inspired by where I live. Um, if you've seen some of my other videos talking about the research for this book, you'll know that it's set on Flangors Lake, which is a, a lake local to me, which has got lots of legends attached to it and is a very atmospheric place. Um, this is set in present day and in uh, 10th century Wales, so two different time frames there to work with. Um, you can read these books in any order except do not read The Return of the Witch before you have read, oh, not that one, before you have read The Witch's Daughter, okay? Obviously those two have to be read in order. The others are all standalone stories, so you can go with whichever one takes your fancy, okay? Um, I'll be doing more about each individual book and the research and the background and talking about the characters and taking your questions, but if you have any more questions about the series that isn't a series, about what it's like to write books that are a collection, that are connected, or what it's right to like, like to write a sequel. You can put those questions in the comments. Don't forget to like, to share, and to subscribe, and happy reading. <laughs>